following presentation is for educational purposes only. All of the symbols, trading ideas, and live trading are for demonstrational purposes and are not recommendations or trading advice. Past performance may not be indicative of future results. All of the information and opinions expressed by third-party guests are their own and are not necessarily those of Ninja Trader LLC. Trading futures involve substantial risk and may not be suitable for everyone, and trading futures can result in losses greater than the initial required margin. Traders should only trade features with risk capital. Risk capital is money that you can afford to lose without jeopardizing your financial security or current lifestyle. You can find additional disclosure information on the Ninja Trader website. Welcome back to Ninja Trader Live. I'm your host uh, for this segment, Let's Talk Futures. Tom Schneider, CMT with Ninja Trader. And it's my pleasure and privilege to welcome back to Ninja Trader Live Tim Reset from E Mini Mine. Uh, as founder of e -Mini Mine, And uh, Tim, welcome back. Great to see yeah. you. Yeah. Hey, Tom. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. So uh, we were just, there's just a lot of talk about um, an earthquake here in New York, uh, mm -hmm. East Coast. So uh, sorry if I'm a little distracted, but uh, <laughs> hopefully you didn't feel it where you are. No, no. I'm all the way out in Arizona. So it was pretty uh, quiet here. Oh, that's great. Again, I, we talked about it before, one of my favorite places on earth. So um, yeah. jealous that you're there, but how have you been? Good, good. Yeah, very good. This is a great time to be uh, be trading and always like the spring and fall times. And and you're, you're a big outdoor enthusiast, right? You do yep. cycling, is it bicycling, right? Yep, do a lot of mountain biking, um, hiking and other things too, but um, spend a lot of time uh, riding my bike. <laughs> nice, nice. So there, you're the place to do it. Um, yep. But uh, the topic today, I thought was an interesting one that you you brought up, uh, fear of missing out, and um, you know, just we talk about it. It's it's been you know an acronym, FOMO. We hear about it, but I think it's an easy thing to kind of gloss over when we really should be looking at it a little more closely. So I'm interested to hear your take on um, you know what how you deal with it as a mentor to other traders. Yeah, I think the the biggest hurdle that you need to get over that I got over in, you know, the last I'm going on almost 20 years now is not being, being comfortable, not placing a trade, like coming into the day when I am trading with the expectation that I don't have to make a trade. I don't have to force anything. And that mindset is uh, really, really helpful because then I'm not just sitting there saying, okay, I, I have to make $500 today. And I have to find a trade and force a trade um, because that's when you know you find yourself digging yourself a hole and uh, trying to make something happen when maybe the market's not uh, super conducive to your your trading that day or maybe it's just a slow day. Yeah, I find that as I get older, you you want to be more productive, right? Mm -hmm. You want and and this bleeds into your personal life and your. Uh, time for yourself away from the screens, away from the the trading. You 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 can't. I can't just sit still, right? I can't just relax. <laughs> and so, um, but it's but that that same idea kind of goes counter to what we need to know about trading, which is sometimes that gets you into trouble. Exactly what you're saying. Like you don't have to trade, but trading is our you know, could be your life, your, your life's work. It could be your ways of making your main income certainly could be your supplemental income. And in order to do that, you do have to trade. So it's kind of two, two opposite ideas, mm -hmm. but, you know, how do you turn that into something that's, that's beneficial? I think setting up your trading in such a way, you know, most folks coming into trading are, are coming from some type of other career. I, I was, pretty fortunate to start young and be exposed to, you know, the trading pits as a, a, a younger, you know, high school age kid, and then get exposed to screen trading and actually start trading in college, which is fairly young. And so coming from, you know, very little responsibility at that time in your life and building a life that starts around low uh, I guess low responsibility and flexibility to bring trading into it uh, was, you know, a big benefit. And structuring the trading around 
the rest of your day. So I like to focus on the morning, the nice open as my trading window to allow me to do other things throughout the day. And when I put those constraints on the day, that's a, just another way to kind of free up my, I guess, mental capacity to be comfortable not trading those other hours. You know, you've got 24 hours of essentially tradable time. And so if I really put the constraints on the first 90 minutes, the two hours of the day, that it kind of releases me from the feeling of, oh, I'm, I'm missing out. I could be trading these other times. I kind of came to that conclusion with just chunking my day, looking at the that my P&L basically throughout the day. I had been trading all day long. And I looked at, okay, what was my P&L from all my trades just in the morning, just over the lunch hour, just at the close? And so it wasn't that I wasn't having winning trades other times of the day. It's just that they would end up kind of being a wash, especially over lunch. Um, and at the close, uh, you know, sometimes you find yourself revenge trading or trying to make something back at the end of the day. And I found that, yeah, I might have a few winning trades, but on net over, you know, six months, a year, multiple years, yeah, it's better to just focus my efforts in the morning and then be done. And so that really helps kind of constrain the potential risk as well. And then yet I don't feel as much FOMO because this is my time window. I can be super focused and then I can get away and, and do other things. You know, that's interesting. Um, Mike, Mike Burke was talking on our previous segment about a time stop. Mm -hmm. you no, know, we talk about stops when you have a trade on, you have a protective stop, maybe you have a stop to get into a trade, right? A breakout trade. But he was talking about he'll put time stops on. And and again, we have the luxury of of being, uh, you know, at the screens all day working at Ninja Trader. But for, for, you know, a lot of traders, it is about restricting not just, uh, you know, how much you can lose in terms of price, but how much you can lose based on time or, or, and I shouldn't say lose, it's constraining your trading to mm -hmm. times that either you're good at, right? Okay. Or maybe it just, you don't have the time to trade after. So I'm going to, I'm going to be done at two. I'm going to be done at noon. I'm going to be done at 11, whatever time period I'm doing New York times. Um, mm -hmm. That's it. It's, it's a form, it's another form of discipline. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a couple other things I do to help kind of keep some of those constraints, um, I will, I've always limited myself to two full stop outs in the morning session. So if I, you know, open my charts and in the first five minutes, I take two trades and I get stopped out on both. It's like, okay, I've, I'm done for the day. And so just knowing that in the back of my mind that if I have two stop outs, I'm done. That keeps me a little more patient and just make sure that, okay, yeah, is this a valid entry? Does this meet my criteria? Um, is this something I want to? I want to take. And so that kind of helps slow down my um, maybe eagerness to jump into a trade right off the open. And, uh, and then, yeah, having that time window to, uh, to constrain my morning is also really helpful. So knowing that, and that's how you approach the morning, approach your trading day, really, do you, what, what happens like today, 8 30 AM, right? We get this number and it looks pretty pretty spectacular movement based on the fact that it was kind of light trading or or you know not a big trading range and then you get this number and it really moves the market right and I, and i'm not saying maybe it has to be because of a number it could just be hey the market's moving um that that to me is you know i i want to get in and and jump on a move that's where i see a lot of fomo happening right the market's mm -hmm. doing this and Maybe I didn't anticipate it, but boy, this market looks great. Jumping in uh, would be good right now. I'm going to hit that buy button or I'm going to hit that sell button where in the futures market, mm. go, we can go short. Um, how how do you overcome that? You know, because it could be a good trade, right? You mm -hmm. know, we're thinking in our mind, it could be a good trade. Um, you know, what's what's even with the constraints you've put on, let's say, uh, knowing you have two stop outs, Boy, this mark this this move looks really good. You know, what are some of the things you do to deal with that that feeling? So I have always avoided trading news announcements or reactionary 
trade. So like, you know, when you get the Fed meeting announcement on that Wednesday afternoon, I, I purposely don't trade that time. Um, and I know sometimes it, it can seem a little bit um, maybe counterintuitive, but what I found is a lot of times if you're purposely going into tr into trade the news, you put such a emphasis on look at the money I could win as opposed to coming at it from the perspective of let's manage my risk first. And so if there's a valid setup and a news announcement has you know, just come out, I'm fine placing a trade, but I'm not going to put on a trade just ahead of a number or just on top of a number to try and you know catch a giant pop just because I think it'll be it'll be the expectations. Um, and I think that's where a lot of FOMO comes from trying to get that either quick win or big profit. And boy, there's so many trades that I take where, you know, it's a perfect looking setup and it just kind of fizzles. Right. And other times where it's like, well, yeah, it meets my criteria. It's maybe not the perfect double bottom or the perfect breakout uh, setup, but yeah, it meets the criteria. And then it ends up, you know, slowly taking off and ends up being a big winner. So knowing that just around the corner, you know, any trade uh, could end up being a runner if, if you're the kind of person that, you know, trails a stop or leaves it open-ended to be a big trade um, versus just, you know, taking a fixed profit every trade, then, um, you know, to me, it's like, well, there's another day tomorrow, another week, there's probably about 45 good trading weeks out of the year that you can trade. So it's like one day missing this one trade, quote unquote, missing it. Um, I always know that there's another day right around the corner. Um, and then another thing that I do that I thought of, um, if I can't trade on a specific day, I won't go back and scrutinize the market that like go through the charts and say, oh, what trades did I miss? Cause I wasn't here today. Cause you're, you're only going to see the winning trades. Like those are the only trades that'll pop out at you. You're not going to see the losers that you didn't take. And so just making that a habit of not going back and trying to find all the winners. Oh, I, I didn't trade over lunch or the afternoon. So don't bother going into the charts and trying to find all the winners from that time because you weren't there in real time and you didn't see, oh, maybe there was a winner, but you would have also had two losers. So it, it, that can kind of create a false narrative as the uh, phrase is put. <laughs> right, right, because you're looking for uh, – um proof that you're right not yes. proof that you're wrong yeah confirmation bias right confirmation thank you i couldn't remember the term <laughs> but uh you know and and that you don't want to beat yourself up over that because that mm -hmm. could be you know uh not false but it could give you a, a false sense of security right it, it yep. could give you oh yeah and and then there's also the you know couple that with oh i missed it now mm -hmm. do i have to rethink my my approach right to mm -hmm. trade um, you know, it, it, it's a good, good advice there. Another thing that I'll do is, you know, using Monday and Tuesday or especially Monday, it's kind of a day to get a idea of what kind of trend or what kind of setups are working or not working throughout the morning. Um, and then, you know, Tuesday, if I start to see those same patterns, it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Go counter trend trades aren't really working that well so far this week, or, um, wow, every time we break out, we just immediately roll over. So maybe I want to stay away from those kind of trades. So using some of the cues earlier in the week, or if you're using a daily chart, you know, for the last couple of months, it's right. just been this tight, clean uptrend. And so waiting for, um, you know, expecting that to continue until there's a bigger trend break, not trying to fight things. Um, fight the trend can you know those kind of habits can just uh, become practicing that can then become better habits so you're you're more comfortable sitting tight and saying okay well I'm going to trade with this uptrend until the uptrend breaks and I'm comfortable doing that right fear of missing out also you could address that by not missing out in the first place right yeah or feeling like oh I have to pick the top or I have oh. to pick the bottom you know it, it's good to it's good to think like a chess player and be thinking a few steps ahead. Um, so if you're, you're thinking, Oh, the next, you know, next time the market has a big sell-off, I want to add to 
such and such position, right. um, but not fe- not putting so much emphasis on um, having to time it perfectly. Yeah, yeah, that 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 makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, that idea about going with the trend, the trend is your friend is, you know, obviously we've heard that so many times. And at some point that trend will break, right? Mm-hmm. We know that, right? And that's why you have stops and that's why you protect yourself. Um, but, you know, identifying where you are in that trend, um, you know, what we've seen since, you know, the lows in October is this trend hasn't gone straight up. It's been very cyclical in nature, right? Advance, mm-hmm. pullback, advance, pullback, advance, pullback. And so knowing where you are in that intra intra trend trend, so to speak, what the smaller trend is, mm-hmm. um, can help you with that FOMO as well, because, you know, yeah, you could take it on a larger scale and say, I want to be in this trend, but, um, you know, you might be jumping on a point where that mini trend is extended and about mm-hmm. to pull back. And then you get discouraged because you just jumped in. You didn't, you didn't read the charts, mm-hmm. you know, to a little more extent. So yeah. Or saying, Oh, I'm just going to buy puts because the market's up. Like I right. need a need better criteria than just the market's up to try right. and short. Um, and you you brought up right you remind me of another good point. I always trade the same size, uh, you know, every position that I have or you know every trade that I take, yeah. um, just because I'm I'm open to any trade. You know, could be a, a nice winner. And so right. if I if I think this trade's going to be a big winner and I go double or triple size, and then I get stopped out. And I think this trade over here, eh, it doesn't look that great. I'm going to go half size and it's a big winner. Now, all of a sudden you're screwing up your, you know, your data set and uh, you're bringing more subjectivity in than you need to. Right, right. So it's be consistent with your, your trade size. And Mm. that will, you know, that, that decision about the trade size um, might influence you know, your, your, your conviction on a trade, right? Yep. And yeah. Consistency is king with your, your size, your entries and how I manage the trade. If I'm manipulating or tweaking every trade, and then I go look at my last 50 trades, it's very hard to draw conclusions and say, okay, well, this is working and this is not. So you got to kind of put a framework together and say, okay, I'm going to get into the trade and then we're going to take half off at you know, three points on the ES and then trail the other half of the position or whatever you're, um, you know, just keep it simple. But uh, doing that same thing on repeat, I value that a lot more than just catching any odd big winning trade, but not really being able to pinpoint how I did it. So um, right. again, kind of you, you gain some of that consistency and then you build confidence and then you don't have as much FOMO. Right, right. Um, you know, you mentioned earlier 45 weeks, good trading weeks out of the year. Um, uh, you know, I, I would imagine it revolves around volume, right? Where there are a lot of participants in the market, those, you know, six, seven weeks that you're not trading might be light weeks. And, and I think we had mm-hmm. one last week. So, you know, are you, are you anticipating certain times of the year, like Christmas, yep. right? Christmas, you, you know, lighter week we have some holidays thrown in there with new years and christmas and um you know maybe a lot of traders i know go on vacation right Mm -hmm. last two weeks of december um just curious because we just had a week that seemed like very low volume finishing uh you know uh, with um with good friday uh Mm -hmm. into the next week into this week um with easter week you know, is could this be considered, you know, one or two of the weeks that um, volume is light and you're not, you know, maybe not trading as much or? or um, yeah, I, it... so the holiday weeks, like you said, are, are weeks that I plan not to trade like Christmas, between Christmas and New Year's and yeah. Fourth of July week is usually a screwy week. So, or if you have a three day weekend, sometimes, um, especially in the summer, um, those weeks can be a little bit slower. Uh, spring and fall tend to be the higher volume periods. Summer tends to have lower volume. Um, I also plan breaks around um, like futures expiration or rollover yeah. week can right. be a little bit wonky. And so going into the year, if I know that I have specific breaks lined up, just like a 
you know, a, a sports athlete would have an off season or have a big game and then take a week off or a couple weeks off. Um, that can really help the longevity and staying focused and not getting burnt out. But, you know, a week like this, um, I'm not coming into the week saying it's going to be a slow week. I'm not going to trade that much. It's just kind of how it develops where it's right. like, oh, Monday's a little slow. Oh, Tuesday's kind of the same. Let me kind of sit on my hands at the open on Wednesday and see if that pattern continues. And then you get to Thursday, Friday, and it's like, oh, yeah, it's been kind of a slow week. Caught a couple of, um, you know, 15-minute moves and and a good uh, a put trade from yesterday. But it was like, okay, well, Friday, I don't really need to overdo it. We'll just see if there's a good setup or two and then call it quits, you know, kind of early in the morning. So, um, yeah, the – Starting the year slow, ending the year slow, and taking a break in the middle is kind of a really good approach to stay um, stay on top of it and be able to be focused when it's important. Otherwise, if you sit there and trade five days a week, every day of the year, on vacation, you, you just uh, run yourself into the ground. Right, right. No, <laughs> so so there is so there is you know you react to to the situation at hand. You're adaptive. Um, yeah, and it's okay if you miss a day because you have doctor appointment, sick kid, or whatever. Um, you know, just remind yourself, okay, tomorrow is another trading day, and there's more opportunities. Especially if you're a day trader, you know, you have a lot more opportunities every single day. Even if the daily trend is maybe going sideways intraday, there's lots of trends that we can take advantage of. Whereas if you're swing trading, maybe you only have five or six trades in a month. And right. uh, you just have to be patient to wait for those and, and not over trade the choppy times so that when the good times come, all you're doing is filling your hole back in. You want right. to be able to limit how deep you your drawdown is so that when your winning trades come, now you're just building up on top. Yeah, we we talk about, you know, if we we, we experiment with trading and, and you might have seen Mike and I doing that at, at mm. when you were when you were waiting and you know, one of the things that we, we definitely want people to know is if you miss your trade, that's okay. Right. Because the next one will co be coming along any moment now. Right. Mm. You know, your setup, you might see it and you might say, wow, if it pulls back here, we're going to go long. And if it, you know, retraces up to here, we're going to go short. And if it doesn't get there, oh, well, you might've been right, but you just didn't get your fill. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Guess what? you could trade how many markets in the futures market, right? For stock index futures, a, you know, a handful of currencies, you know, crude, uh, energies, metals, et cetera. And so you've got a bunch of different markets that'll have something coming along, um, mm -hmm. you know, maybe even today, right? Yeah. So and it will down. all balance out. If you set your limit order and the market comes down and you start dragging it in, um, there may be a time where, yeah, that limit order, wouldn't have gotten filled, but for all the other times you drag it in, the price would have came down and filled you anyways. So right, right. <laughs> just like if uh, you know price comes up and, and touches my my order or like my target, um, you know with futures you, you got to get it to trade through most of the time. Otherwise, sometimes it comes up and touches it. We joke and call that a magic fill, where it's like it didn't <laughs> right. break through it. And uh, yeah, if you start dragging your orders down or dragging them up to get you know closer to where price is and further away from where your stop is um, that that's a really bad habit to get into. And you just start, you know, staring at your trade ladder and manipulating your orders. And yeah, next thing you know, you're two points higher than where you wanted to get in. And then price comes right down to your original entry. Right. Right. And and that kind of goes, you know, how do you, how do you beat FOMO is stick with your plan, right? Yep. So when I was starting out, I, I set, my stop and a target that was three times my stop and literally just sat on my hands. Wow. And yeah, it, it may not have been the, the most profitable um, exit approach, but for those first couple months, it was super helpful to be like, okay, I'm either going to get stopped out or I'm going to, it's going to hit this target. And that is the purpose of this time, you know, this, this part of the trading journey. Right. So, so that, you know, to that point, You've got a time stop, as to put it in Mike Burke's words. You've got a time that you trade. You're, mm -hmm. you're trading uh, at you know uh, opening range after the opening range, and at some point you say, "Okay, I'm done at eleven o'clock or twelve o'clock." Um, 
you you don't hold positions over i'm assuming so what what do you do you just you just get out wherever you are at, at that time or if i'm in a winning trade so i do i do have a 15 minute um trade setup that i'll use and there's a lot of times where you know it hasn't hit my target yet but i'm so i'm still in the trade um and i'll just i'll let that go to to the afternoon and then when i come back at an hour before the close mm -hmm. if i'm if it still hasn't hit my target i'll either just close it out right there for whatever profit i have or just stick my stop underneath whatever that 15 minute bar is and right. uh, kind of trail it up into the close if I'm long. So that's really the only case. So only if I'm in a winning trade would I just stay in the trade past like the 90 minute mark. Got it. Got it. So it's conditional, of course. If your yep. if your trade isn't going your way, but you haven't been stopped out, mm -hmm. you, you, would you leave the stop in, or would you just say, you know what, I'm done? So I will always wait for like if I have a stop out there and it comes. If I have a two point stop and it comes a point and a half against me, I won't just change and say, oh, well, I'm just going to close it out here because I've had plenty of trades come one tick away from my stop right. even and then turn around. So it's like I've right. gone into the trade. I've accepted this is my max loss and I'm comfortable with that. So anything better than that is is gravy, so to speak. Yeah. Right. Right. So it's, again, sticking with your plan um, and, and trusting in yourself that you have identified areas not only from a from a risk management point of view as far as your your balance sheet or your PL, but also from well, what is the market telling me? And mm -hmm. and my stop is at a good spot. I'm happy with it. My target's at a good spot. I'm happy with it. And I'm not going to change it. And that kind of again is that discipline that helps with FOMO. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And purposely not placing a trade right before being very aware of the news that's coming out in the morning so you're not putting on a trade right before that news that then causes you to change things or manipulate things uh in kind of a reactionary panic way right right we've seen those moves i mean i i i dabbled with that right because a previous previous job i worked at a news company right bloomberg mm -hmm. and so you know having that news having the charts etc it's tempting to say, okay, we can think of where the market should go if if the number comes in hot, cold, uh, you know, spot on. So I'm going to put my tar, you know, my entries reflective of that. So mm -hmm. many times you would see both getting hit, right? Yep. So the market <laughs> jumps up, yep. doesn't get to your target to get out, but it turns around and gets your other other yeah. now you've, just, <laughs> you've you've done the opposite of a good trade you've done a really bad trade just look at every fed meeting announcement you know every six weeks it's like right. the result might be up but first you get that spike in the other direction and then back up and back down so even if you pick the right direction right staying in the trade is what is super challenging so it's, and that's where you get the slippage and make the mistakes and that kind of stuff so that's why i kind of sit out on those instances right that's yeah that's not for the faint of heart i think but um you know and and it's like riding a well i wouldn't know i'd have to ask larry williams riding a a, a, a bucking bronco right <laughs> yeah hold on hold on uh -huh. um well you know tim i really appreciate you coming on and, and yeah thanks for about, having me about fomo and um you know we'll do this again soon uh, we'll, we'll have you back on, but I, I just wanted to, you know, let people know where can they find you? Cause you are on the Ninja Trader ecosystem, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. On the Ninja Trader. Um, and, uh, you can eminimind.com is a good place to find me or shoot me an email if you have questions. Great. Do you have a YouTube channel? Uh, yeah, you can search yeah. eminimind on YouTube. Yep. Got some videos up there. I'm not super active on social media, uh, post a little bit on Twitter, but that's about it. Okay. That's great. That's great. Um, well, again, I want to thank you for, you know, spending a, a, a good chunk of your time today with us and um, imparting some wisdom. And we'll, you know, I think we, are we scheduled for, for next week? I, I, I don't have my calendar. Uh, I think you. maybe two certainly weeks. Two weeks. Yep. Two weeks. Yes, yep. exactly. So we'll do this again. I'm looking forward to it. But again, thanks, Tim, for coming on. Yeah. Thanks for having me.
of the symbols, trading ideas, and live trading are for demonstrational purposes and are not recommendations or trading advice. Past performance may not be indicative of future results. All of the information and opinions expressed by third-party guests are their own and are not necessarily those of Ninja Trader LLC. Trading futures involve substantial risk and may not be suitable for everyone, and trading futures can result in losses greater than the initial required margin. Traders should only trade features with risk capital. Risk capital is money that you can afford to lose without jeopardizing your financial security or current lifestyle. You can find additional disclosure information on the Ninja Trader website.